Okay, folks, uh, let's uh, mm, do a, another example. Well, you know, I promise you it's not going to be a cantilever beam anymore. Uh, in this example, I'm going to show you how, how handy uh, principle of virtual world is. So basically, what, what we're going to do here is that uh, we're going to do um, uh, an example uh, using... Oh, gee, why is this not focusing? Okay, here we go. An example using principle of virtual work. Okay, so the the thing that what we want to do is that we want to solve a indeterminate beam, uh, which is uh, um, like this. Gee, you like everybody knows it's indeterminate, and then you have a e i and you have a l. Okay, and then the um, load. Uh, yeah, it's not a, a point load at the, you know, tip anymore. It's a uniform load over the entire span of the beam. Okay, great. So we're, we're saying, okay, if this is X, and then what is uh, the deflected shape? Yeah, I, I could say, oh, you know what? Um, you could say, okay, what's the maximum deflection at? Like, yeah. In fact, if you just get this Vx, uh, it'll answer almost all the questions like someone could possibly ask you about this beam. So, if you think about it, you're gonna be like, uh, Mm, okay, so let's try to solve it. And you're like, how? Okay, we, we're going to assume uh, a Vx. Uh, then, yeah, like I said, if you have Vx, if we can solve for this, you got all the deflection, all the stresses, all the strain, and everything. So, uh, how do I do this? We, we, we just say, okay, um, it's probably going to be like AX squared plus BX third plus CX fourth. I can go on, but uh, you know what? Yes, three terms is probably enough. Um, the... Um, yeah, in fact, you know why I have that? So, because we, yeah, I cheated a little bit. Because uh, I, I picked, uh, I picked uh, because I want to know to, want to show you at this example, this actually works. And if you have learning like mechanical material book, which have a beam deflection table on the back, you'll probably be able to find this also. There's a formula for this thing. If we do this situation, the, 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 the deflection curve is actually 3L square X minus 5L X square third plus 2X fourth. Uh, yeah, this is actually the, the answer. And uh, yeah, I don't want to get into too much trouble. Yeah, it's here because I just assume the same thing. And let's see if we can get ABC solved to be exactly at those components. And then I have showed you if I want to continue to add a d uh, x to the si five fifths, e x to the six. It actually doesn't matter because by the end of the day, those will be solved to be zero. And uh, also, you're like, oh, okay, well, n now you're like increasing the. Uh, um, the number of unknowns. It doesn't matter because I'm gonna get a uh, virtual displacement that has the exact the same number of virtual displacement as my unknown components so that I can always solve those. It's just gonna be more involved but it can always be solved. Um, then you know once I did that then you wanna kind of say okay uh, you wanna check uh, boundary condition. 
Uh, for boundary condition, we know that if we put in x equals to 0, uh, it's 0, OK? And then if I take derivative, because I don't have the first order terms, I take derivative, every single uh, component will have an x. Then if I plug in 0, they all became 0, so which means I maintained this boundary condition by not having a constant term and not having a um, uh, first order term. Higher order terms is fine. But how about this guy? Uh, so there's a couple ways to do it, but one uh, one way to do it is to just uh, rewrite this. Um, you know, we'll, we'll enforce that boundary condition 0 equals to v when x equals to l. Then we'll get uh, ax squared plus, um, oh actually it's not that, al squared plus B L third plus C L fourth. Uh, that should be equals to zero. Um, that boundary condition actually tells you, you know, something. Is that A B C? There's you know three variables, but they are actually not three variables. They are actually two variables because they are related. For example, based on this, I can solve for. C is actually equals to negative a l squared plus b l third over l fourth. Yeah, surprise. Yeah, oh, no, it's actually not a surprise. I mean, you should know this. So if I plug C this guy back in here, this will satisfy both my boundary conditions. Uh, so. Uh, we got uh, the real um, displacement function as uh, a x squared plus b x third minus a l squared plus b l x fourth. Um, yeah, as a <coughs> Convenient tool, we we'll always just do our delta 1 x squared plus delta 2 x third minus delta 1 over l squared plus delta 2 over l and x fourth. Those will be our set of uh, um, real displacement with the unknowns we want to solve and the virtual displacement with the uh, arbitrary components. But they are in this formulation, this arrangement, so that they automatically satisfy all the boundary conditions of this beam. So the, the, the rest is actually quite simple. You just need to calculate external and then the internal and then try to make it work. But then, uh, I, I don't think we've never done this before, but uh, uh, yeah, I hope we're actually in a class, then I will say, hey, uh, you know, Banks, uh, give me the, how, how do you calculate this? Then Banks gonna say, oh, well, I, I'm not sure. Then I'll say, okay, well, anybody, anyone? Then nobody gonna answer it because you don't know. Okay, the work done by a distributed uh, load you have to get the work done by it through integration. What do you do is you do this. Uh, then, you know, Q, uh, that's uniform. And then uh, you do the virtual uh, virtual displacement because it's on the virtual displacement. And then integrate over the lens. Uh, right, makes sense. So, uh, what you really are doing now, um, <clears throat> so basically you just plug this guy in here times Q. I mean, in fact, because Q is constant, I can get it out. But you can see how convenient this is. If your Q is also a function of X, you just do the integral, right? It, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's tough, but uh, you can do it. So you got Q out, then you start to integrate this this guy. Uh, yeah, what, what in the end gonna happen is like, like first term, you integral it, it becomes uh, this, right? Integral. 
Uh, then the second one, you got it. Um, it's uh, um, plus delta 2, 4, x fourths. Uh, then you do those guys, it's fifths, minus um, 5 L square x fifths, and then minus uh, delta 2 uh, x fifths, okay. uh, 5 L. And then you're going to evaluate this from L to 0 or 0 to L, whatever you want to say, but if you put it in 0, it's all that. So the, the work, the virtual work done by the Q along the entire length of the beam, um, yeah, it's actually just plug L in. And then we'll rearrange so that we can kind of just do all the terms together. Uh, you'll end up getting... Um, it's a Q uh, 3 over 1 minus 5 over 1. Yeah, I know, I can calculate it, but I prefer to write it this way, delta 1 plus Q times 4 over 1 minus 5 over 1 and uh, L force delta 2. Yeah, it's just a little bit complicated and uh, nothing too bad about it. So now you do the internal, right? Ah, uh, come on. Now you do the internal. The internal work uh, is, uh, again, EI, because we're doing Euler Bernoulli beam, 0 to L, and then you uh, you take the second derivative of this guy, you times uh, the second derivative of this guy, and then dx. Okay. Yeah, this one's actually, you know, pretty, um, pretty involved. I mean, I would highly suggest you just do it by yourself. But there's nothing too difficult about it. Okay. I mean, just polynomials, and then you have to do this, and then try not to make mistakes. Um, but by the end of the day, after you everything's said and done, it is e i. Mm. Well, th yeah, this can be a little bit difficult to watch, but it is true. 144 over 5 minus 12 A L plus 144 over 5 minus 20 um, times B L square, and this thing times delta 1, then plus. Um, <clears throat> okay. The same thing is so you got uh, the 144 over 5 minus 20. Uh, remember, because we used the same format, so this matrix should be symmetric. A L square, um, then plus uh, 144 over 5 minus 24. Uh, B L third. There are two. Then because then you, you equate this guy with this guy and realize that there are one, there are two, they can you know actually be anything. You have two equations. Those two equations, uh, if I write it, is something like that. Something like this. Q divided by E I. I mean you got that thing out. And then uh, here is uh, 2 over 15 L third, and then 1 over 20 L fourth. Uh, that should be equals to a matrix which is 1, 4, 4, 5, minus 12 L, and 1, 4, 4 over 5, minus 20 um, L square. 1, 4, 4, uh, over 5, minus 20, L square, and finally, 1, 4, 4, over 5, minus 24, L third, this entire thing times A and B. And, well, guess, guess what do you find? 
you find out a uh, after you solving this entire thing is equal to 3 over 48 EI over L square and Q. Uh, B is equal to negative 5 L Q over 48 EI. And then remember we have this C here. It still holds. So you plug that in. You find out your C equals to 2 Q over 48 E i and then if you compare to that answer right here remember it's 48 yeah on the bottom q here 3 negative 5 and 2 3 negative 5 and 2 so that's the uh, exact answer okay so, uh, a couple of things to think about here. Uh, first of all, you know, the if you don't know principal virtual work, okay, you have no idea what it is. Then as you solve this, what are you going to do? Um, you're going to probably just structure theory, right? You're going to release this guy, um, just add Q, draw the mobile diagram, then either you do double integration or using virtual uh, like unit force method to find the deflection here. Then you're gonna get rid of this guy, and then put a unit force here, and then push it up, find the deflection. Then you make that deflection here equals zero. You, you know, basically impose the boundary condition here, and then you solve for that force. Once you solve that force, you're not done. Okay, once you solve that force. You can actually apply that force, get a moment diagram, and then you're gonna superimpose that moment diagram with the moment diagram from this guy to get a new moment diagram function mx. Then you're gonna double integrate that mx to get the deflection curve. And then uh, while you're doing that, because double integration, you have two unknowns uh, then you have to imply uh, apply the boundary condition again so after all that you will get this um, but uh, using principle of virtual work you directly uh, assume this and then all you need to do is to balance those two terms uh, so yeah, this example may seem to be a little bit uh, um, theoretical, uh, but it does show the the nature of principal virtual work. It is a very handy and very straightforward uh, approach. It basically attacks the core of the problem, which is this displacement function. It attacks it directly, and all you need to do is make sure you don't make a algebra uh, and calculus mistakes along the way. Okay, so that's this example.